Please welcome Jason Rosario, founder and creative director of The Lives of Men, and Mary Kay Gelhulu, director of Global Wellness at Adobe. Hi, everyone. I am Jason Rosario, and I am the founder of The Lives of Men. And I have the honor to sit in this conversation with my friend, Mary Kay Galuli of Adobe. Uh, this conversation could not have come at a better time uh, as we consider the implications of what's happening with the dual pandemic of COVID-19 and the civil unrest brought about by issues around systemic racism. And now more than ever, we are having a conversation around mental health, specifically in the workplace and what companies can do to better support uh, their employees in, in kind of this environment of uh, being socially distanced and remote work. So without further ado, Mary Kay, I've got some questions for you. Uh, oh. We have a rich conversation in front of us, so really excited to get into it. So here's my question. I, I know that Adobe has done a lot to adjust to remote work, and I, I know that you all have really pivoted a lot of the work that you're doing for your employees around mental health and, and wellness. And so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done um, specifically uh, to, to, to make more tools and resources available to employees and perhaps tell us a little bit about what managers specifically are doing to support their team. Definitely. So one of the things that was, was really helpful for us was that um, emotional well-being and well-being was already um, something that was um, part of Adobe's culture. Um, but then when the pandemic hit and we had to move um, everyone to working from home, um, we had to accelerate a number of our different programs. Um, and we did this by um, looking at how employees were providing us feedback, what, what their, their needs were. So we looked at how we can um, be more flexible with our schedules, um, providing employees with more um, resources to help get their, their workplace set up so that they're, they're safe and comfortable at home. Um, so we, we've also put together um, a number of different programs through um, our EAP to ensure that employees knew that that was available if they were um, finding themselves needing an extra support or wanting to talk to someone who is outside of their, their household. Um, on top of that, to answer your question around what we did for managers, talking about, about well-being and emotional well-being um, for managers probably wasn't something that they were used to doing. And so um, a couple of things happened. We discovered that we needed to kind of help them build that muscle. So we created a, um, a manager newsletter that in each newsletter, um, there's, there's resources for managers on how to talk to employees, what to look for, signs and symptoms um, for their employees, but also for themselves so that they're taking um, care of themselves while they're, while they're taking care of, um, of their employees. So we're continuing to do um, those messaging and to get the word out. Um, and, but we're still learning, you know, we're still testing and getting feedback from employees and, and both from managers while, while work from home um, continues, right? Absolutely. And, and that's such a great point. It's, it's, you know, when you think about mental health as a topic, you know, it was, and it still is illegal to, to ask people about their mental health and things like that. And so now that we are talking about this and it's such a, an important conversation um, in terms of building uh, inclusive culture remotely, uh, I can imagine that, you know, even developing the language oftentimes and kind of the rapport uh, to, to engage in these conversations is a very difficult proposition. Um, I have another question. In terms of, uh, you know, so programming, what are you seeing working? Um, you know, I know that there, there are a multitude of EAP programs, and I know that there are other programs kind of outside of your normal benefits, but what have you seen work so far in, in a short amount of time that employees are coming back to you and giving you positive feedback on? Jason, the, the funniest thing about this is that um, we always think, oh, could we buy a program? Could we um, get a vendor in? The, the programs that work the best um, are the ones that are, are developed by us um, and have employees at the, at the center. 
So um, our network groups and our Slack channels for employees to be able to connect has been, you know, one of the, um, the channels and the things that we've really leveraged the most. Um, we've also brought in some pretty dynamic speakers around health and well-being. And the, the interesting part is it's not just the speakers, but it's the engagement and the Q&A and the chat after or during the speakers that we've really seen um, bringing employees together on a particular topic so that they can have, have those dialogues. Um, the other thing that has been um, pretty exciting is that we have um, our diversity and inclusion team has had these coffee talks on Friday where they'll bring in um, a leader from the organization and ask them about themselves, get, ask them about their, their background, um, how they got to where they are in their career, really trying to show and, and open up um, and provide some transparency and, and, and give employees like a, a more friendly and open um, dialogue with, with some of our leaders. So that has been really, really, um, has gone a long way with our employees and employees have, have liked it a lot and have, have engaged. So it, it hasn't been a program that we you know, brought from the outside, but something we've, we've developed internally that, that has been most popular for sure. Yeah, and, and you know, it's not surprising that that's the case. You know, I'm, I'm, I've been engaging with a lot of agencies and a lot of different uh, brands around this concept of psychological safety and how do you build psychological safety in, in an environment of remote work? And you just touched on it, right? Sometimes it's the yeah. simplest thing when we humanize the organization and look at it as a set of individuals and not a set of kind of verticals and silos, we can then look at the organization uh, in, in, as a human being and, and look at it and see what makes it work, what makes it tick. Um, and I think the, the vulnerability piece is so important. And what I've learned and what I've heard from leaders as well is that, you know, when they model the behavior of what vulnerability looks like and what it looks like to share and be more open, it really does invite a different level of conversation uh, amongst their teams. And so I would, I would say that that's something that as leaders that are listening in on this call, you know, if you're looking at uh, or if you're thinking about what to do, you know, sometimes it's just as simple as looking in the mirror and seeing how you can show up better yeah. and show up more vulnerably, more open. Uh, and then hopefully that translates into more dialogue, more open dialogue. Yeah, Jason, just to, um, to comment on that, and I, I, I'm sure we've all experienced it on our, um, our Zoom calls or video calls, but there's, um, there, there's something really great that, that, that um, when people are starting out meetings, that there's this um, kind of camaraderie or sharing that's happening before meetings. And I really encourage leaders to engage in that kind of um, conversation before a meeting starts. And that's one thing that I really hope happens after you know, COVID ends, that we, we continue to check in with one another. Um, and it's not just about how are you, because it, that's a simple answer, fine. Um, but to how are you today? Um, or, or maybe even leaving it open-ended as a leader, you know, I'm struggling today. Um, this COVID is, is going on for a long, a long time. I'm starting to feel the stress. So, you know, showing that, that vulnerability, um, building on, on empathy and, you know, allowing um, your teams to um, express how they're, how they're feeling. I think it, um, yeah. Yeah. So important. Um, so, you know, we often talk a lot about the employees themselves, you know, Mary Kay, and, and we spent some time talking about this offline. Um, really, you know, obviously, I started off by asking you what company, what your company, as an example, is doing for your employees. But there's a group that's not uh, that we I don't want to say neglect, but definitely aren't considering as much. And that is, you know, a group, the group of people that are caring for children, for example. Um, so it's obviously thinking about them and, and how they're not only having to worry about work, but also perhaps homeschooling. But we also don't we often don't think about the mental health uh, and what kind of support we need to offer to the children themselves that have been kind of displaced and their routine routines have been uh, uprooted. So what what are you seeing around that in terms of uh, perhaps programming or support that uh, companies can offer, not just to the employee, but perhaps the entire family? 
Definitely. You know, when I think about, <clears throat> excuse me, being a little kid and when, when, when school was in session and you were excited for a birthday party at school and now we're, you know, sheltering in place or at home and there's, there's disappointment. So when kids feel disappointed, then parents feel disappointed. And that's an, you know, an added stress on, on the parent. You, you want your kid to have all the experiences as they, as they would, as, as we all have. And then, you know, now it's, it's summertime and, and kids are out of school and there's still this unknown about what's going to happen um, with schools in, in the fall. So a couple of things that we're doing, um, one, really creating and driving our employees to um, a, a parent Slack channel so that they can, you know, share um, stories and, and, and best practices. Um, we're providing as many resources and education for parents to help prioritize, providing flexibility in their schedules. And then we're continuing to look at what are additional benefits that we can provide aside from things that we're already doing? So, you know, expanding potentially um, a reimbursement program. Is there programs out in the marketplace that we could potentially leverage to help um, parents? But then it also goes back to um, training our, our managers and our teams into having empathy for, um, for employees with kids or multiple kids. I mean, they are really juggling a lot. So I think more is gonna be coming out in this area. Um, and we're constantly checking in with you know, what's happening within our peer companies. Um, that's what we're thinking. One of the things um, that I have to, to share with the team that we're, we're doing is next month, um, as you guys know, um, there's a bring your kid to, to work day, but now it's like bring your kid to work every day. Um, and so we've kind of switched that to um, what's called the Adobe field trip. Instead of bringing um, your kid to work like you would do when we had our, um, our sites and you could come into the office, now we're, we're offering some virtual programming for that week. And we'll be um, testing that out to see, um, does it work? Um, do employees like it? Do their kids like it? Um, and this will be informative and help us inform programs going forward. But it's a big deal right now. And I, uh, my heart goes out to parents because they're, they're juggling so, so much right now. And I'm sure yeah. that, that you're seeing it with the clients that you're supporting too. A hundred percent, you know, and yeah. you, you touched on it. Yeah, burnout is a thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, I read a report recently by the OECD that said uh, that it looked at productivity measured by hours worked. And what what it was interesting is that there is a, an inverse relationship between um, working more hours and productivity. Uh, and in yeah. fact, some of the countries that have the highest number of working hours uh, were some of the lowest GDP producing countries. And so to me, that speaks volumes, right? In an environment yeah. where a lot of us might feel extra pressure to to overwork and to constantly be online and um, and how be told that that takes on our mental health, you know, perhaps it's you know companies can do a better job in, in communicating that hey, look, you know, let's let's shift what we're looking at and how we're measuring you and how we're incentivizing you and moving away from perhaps the performative aspect of being online for a certain number of, number of hours. Yeah. And looking at really, you know, it really just matters, you know, is the work getting done? And that's really what matters. And I think that's, that's part of this fundamental shift that we're talking about in terms of companies supporting their employees in a different way. Absolutely. And the other thing, and this is for everyone, like, make sure to take time off. Um, you know, I think what we, we want to hoard our time because we want to have that, that great vacation or, you know, we're, we're planning for something, but um, it's so important, especially now. And this kind of sneaks up on you and you don't realize that you're, you're burnt out and, until you start kind of feeling some of the signs and symptoms. But um, it's so important for, for yourself, for your team, for your family and your loved ones that, that you're taking care um, of yourself and, and taking the time off. Um, and, and I do think with, with the, the new... Um, the new work from home that you kind of have to look at um, expectations and, and also look at priorities um, and make sure to, to set up boundaries too. 
you know, so that you're, you're, you're giving yourself a break so that you are more, more productive. Um, yeah, it benefits everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, you just touched on something that's important that comes up a lot in my work, right? So I do a lot of yeah. men's work and, um, helping men to understand their emotions through, you know, somatically, right? Like, what does it look like to, to feel anxiety? What does it look like to feel depression? What does it look like to feel um, fear, right? But yeah. in, in your body. And I think you're touching on that, that it's something that applies to not just men, but all of us, right? We, we should all do a, a little bit better job of understanding how our emotions are showing up in our bodies, especially at a time where, you know, we're not really thinking about that. We've got so many other things that we've got, we're concerned about um, that we're, we're paying less and less attention to our, our physical selves. Um, and I think you, you made a great point is that somatic experience being in tune with our bodies that, that can really be, um, good markers to how we're feeling and how we're showing up. Yeah. And, and Jason, you know, um, mental health is emotional well being. It could be anxiety, um, nervousness, and you, you may not even recognize it, but it, it can manifest itself physically in, you know, issues with sleep, um, change in, in diet, weight, um, blood pressure, even dental um, issues like grinding teeth. Um, it's, it's really important to, to pay attention and, and to take the time because it, it, it manifests itself differently in, in different people. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. There's one thing that, you know, I've been you know, somewhat of a shameless plug, but uh, I'm, I'm on the board of uh, uh, an organization called Made of Millions. And uh, Made of Millions is a, actually a friend of the 3% conference. Um, and so some of the work that we're doing there is to bring mental, more mental health awareness uh, to the companies that we work with. Um, and, and we've created a, a, a program called Made Academy that puts mental health awareness on par with all of the other trainings that we've talked about, right, and that we do on a yearly basis. So uh, anti-harassment training, unconscious bias training, we're really doing the work to try to destigmatize mental health in the workplace specifically uh, through training and through conversation. So I think going forward, you know, maybe we should spend a few minutes talking about, you know, what does this look like for the future of work, right? Keeping in mind the theme of the conference today, um, radical inclusion as it relates to the future of work, uh, one of the things that I'd like to see companies do more of is, you know, not only providing the tools and the resources for their employees to, to manage their mental health, but how do we give them the language and the tools to have a conversation? And that's just one of the ways that uh, Made of Millions is an organization that's doing that work. So, you know, what, what, uh, what other things would you offer folks that are listening in uh, that might be in a position to kind of implement some of these things in their companies? What, what types of things would you suggest? companies start to do um, to formalize and operationalize this thinking? Yeah, when, when I think about this, again, it, it's something, you know, silver lining. Um, I hope that when COVID is over, the, the focus on um, emotional well-being and, and mental health continues on because it, it's really the thread um, that flows through everything. I mean, it's tied to our culture, to our programs, um, how re we relate to one another. And, and when I think about it, you know, we've been talking a lot more um, from our leadership level around um, well-being and emotional well-being. So it, it, you know, comes from leadership and leadership support. Um, we're also, you know, training managers, and it, it's a muscle that you need to to build. And Jason, you you hit on it earlier. Um, not everyone knows the language or you know how to approach it. Um, so giving uh, managers those tools and, and resources to be able to have those conversations and to practice with it. Um, and then there's the education um, component, which I think I'm right with you. Like, you know, you're speaking to the choir because I'm like, if we could make this top of mind and tie it into a culture and, and make it mandatory or, you know, um, highly encouraged, um, you know, I think we would all all benefit. And then last is, you know, building up that culture that's um, that's safe um, and having areas for employees to connect. And I know many companies already have that. But, um, you know, through through connection, that's where um, 
employees can share and managers and leadership can learn. So I kind of think of it in those, those three areas, leadership, training, education, and, and connection. Yeah, I love that. And, and I want to add two more things there that are more tactical, one at the organizational level and perhaps one at the individual level. Um, and I think you alluded to it, and that is I love the idea of creating a, a public company wellness calendar and sharing that widely um, and making sure that in there, you're, you, the company actually schedules networking time, schedules perhaps group yoga sessions, um, breaks even. I think that that really does um, not only does it help kind of bring people together and, and around the shared activity, but it does really allow uh, employees to feel less guilt, you know, for taking time for themselves. The other thing that I think from an, an individual perspective that I always um, am vocal about that works for me, and I don't know if it'll work for anyone on this call, and that is we're obviously we're spending more time at home, um, get in the kitchen and cook with real food. That's such a, a therapeutic activity. Um, you know, think about the presence that you need to sit there and cut vegetables up and make sure that the ingredients that you're using are the right ingredients. I mean, that just gets you out of your head um, and potentially has a, a positive effect on your body as well, right? You might be cooking with healthier foods. So really get in the kitchen, start cooking with, with real foods. And, you know, it does work wonders for me at least. So hopefully it, uh, it helps someone on the call. Do you have any, any, anything that you do for yourself? Yes. I'm a big kitchen dancer. So, you know, kind of tying into what you're talking about, about, um, you know, making meals for, for myself and my husband, you know, when we turn on the music, it's, you know, the work has stopped and then it's, it's eating and dance time. And it feels like you're just kind of moving your body, um, getting your day, you know, ended and your, your evening started and, you know, focused at, at, you know, being um, work is done and now uh, it's family time. So um, listening to music and dancing in the kitchen would, would be mine. <laughs> I love that. Hey, I love that. Jason, so I just want to um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Got some questions coming in. Yeah. Um, you read my mind. Switch us over. So this is a great question. Um, how do you hold leaders accountable for maintaining positivity consistently and being vulnerable beyond one-on-one -on -one meetings? That's a great question. Well, that's a, it is a great question. Um, because, you know, when you think about vulnerability and you think about sharing and openness, that's such a, it's not a KPI. So it's hard to yeah. hold someone accountable per se for being human. Um, I would right. say that the environment, we're living in an environment right now where um, connectivity is paramount. And so I think, you know, be, be outspoken yourself, um, model behavior yourself. You know, and, and understand where people are. Uh, try to meet people where they are to a certain extent. Um, you know, we, we can't discount the fact that we're all dealing with re really serious trauma. And trauma doesn't always look like, you know, perhaps getting in a car accident, God forbid, or losing a family member. Um, trauma is scrolling through social media and passively consuming a lot of this stuff. So, right. you know, be mindful of, of where people are and be, be empathetic. That word keeps coming up. Um, and then just to the extent that you can, if you want to maybe push that, that relationship and that conversation, perhaps take the first step. Um, but I would say just be mindful, um, you know, because, again, openness and connectivity isn't a KPI that we can measure and that we can kind of really push forward. Um, so being mindful of that. And, and I would just add, um, right now, a lot of employers um, are, are, are needing to listen to employees, um, to really listen and and to act. So, you know, kind of um, going off of what Jason said, um, provide your feedback. Let let your HR team know. Let your your leaders know um, because they're learning too. It, this is a whole new world. So make sure you're um, that you're providing feedback. Let's see what's what's coming in next. Um, what do you suggest for leaders that don't have kids at home and how can they understand the employees with little kids better since they seem to not understand? Um, they may have stay-at-home partners, but they don't understand the dual um, workings of couples or single parents. So you want to take a stab again, at that first? Yeah. Go, go for it. No, no, no. You first. I, 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 I went say, first last time. Okay. I would say make sure that um, 
that your leader, your manager knows. Um, we're, we're all leaders. So lead by example. If you lead a team, um, make sure that you're empathetic for your team or be empathetic to your coworker. Um, we, we all are leaders. Um, but then again, I would say provide as much um, feedback up as you can. They, they write, may not be empathetic the first time, but if more and more people are sharing that feedback, um, I think that the message will, will be heard. Yeah, <clears throat> that's such a great question because when you think about the work around diversity that we all do, uh, we, we often throw around the phrase, bring your fullest self to work. But we're in an environment now where we have to bring our work to our fullest selves, right? Inviting that into our homes. And so what does that look like? What are the implications of that? And I think we're all trying to figure out what that, that feels and, and looks like. So I would say, look, I, I'm an over communicator. So it, in that scenario, perhaps just communicate, you know, what you're feeling, how it's coming across. And perhaps, you know, I would, I, I'm um, an eternal uh, optimist. And I would always say that people perhaps aren't aware of their behavior. So if you have a manager that perhaps is showing up and not, um, not being as, as uh, empathetic to your situation, Perhaps it's just their level of awareness and where they are. So, you know, maybe take an opportunity to, to, to pull them aside offline and um, have a conversation about what's coming across. And perhaps, you know, hopefully it, it's just a matter of perspective. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think that we need to meet people where they are and, and understand that we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. So, Jason, our, our time is up. It goes by wow, so that fast. Went, that went so fast. <laughs> Yeah, so to everyone, um, we really like to thank you and thank 3% um, for, having, for having us on. It was a great conversation with you, Jason. And to everyone, reach out to us if you, um, if you have any questions and, and we hope that you, you have a really good day. Thank you.